right. Hello, hello, hello. Welcome to another episode of Five for Fridays. This is four weeks in a row. This is, this is great. Some kind of some kind of role that we're on. Uh, new haircut day. Just got my haircut. We're going to talk about five ideas this Friday. And uh, here's how I do this. I come up with a big list of ideas and I pick the ones that sound interesting. So number one is how to never have a problem again. And I was thinking about this. Uh, I was actually thinking about a situation, kind of an embarrassing situation, that, that was a problem at the time back in college. And, and the situation was uh, I, I sort of was, was, a bad, <laughs> was a bad guy in this, in this situation. Uh, I was dating my, my friend's uh, ex-girlfriend, and I never, didn't really ask permission or didn't really talk to him about it. I kind of just hoped that uh, that it wouldn't cause problems and it, and it did, it caused tension between us at the time. And now we're, you know, uh, that's, that's, uh, decades in the past and, uh, you know, we're both happily married and, and our lives have progressed and, and we've stayed friends. But at the time it felt like a big problem and something that I didn't want to face and probably something that he wasn't very happy with. And, and so if you think back, you know, something like, uh, oh, a problem, at the time in high school was, oh, who, who, um, who am I going to go to prom with? Or how am I going to do on this exam? Or, or any number of things that were problems for you at the time that are no longer problems for you. And I want to just point out that every problem you've had, you've made it through. Or else you wouldn't be here watching or listening to this. And so that means that, that nothing is really a problem, which means you don't have to think about it as a problem, which means you can move your attention uh, either coming back to just living your life and not worrying, not worrying about a problem, not getting into some kind of thought loop about the problem. Uh, you, can, you, can start, uh, you can start just going back and, and doing what you really want to be doing, doing the things that uh, creating bring, that bring you joy and uh, you don't have to worry about the problem. And, and what's important here is, is that we believe it's a problem at the time and we're placing our attention and, and probably going over and over in our mind, trying to think our way out of a problem. But, you know, even, even when, I, when I was broke or even when I thought I might die from a blood clot in my brain or even when my house got flooded or any of these things, I've moved through them all. They're no longer problems in my life. And so knowing that whatever you have that you think is a problem right now is eventually not going to be a problem. That means it's not really a problem right now either. It's just something that you're going through and you don't have to get into a, a negative state because of this particular challenge that you're going through. All right, number two on our list is how to make your own holy water. And this is really important because science has shown that our thoughts can be stored and embedded in water. You, you probably have seen the, the famous sort of um, Makamoto freezing experiments where if you think good thoughts about water, uh, the, the ice crystals are beautiful. And if you think mean or evil thoughts about the water, the ice crystals freeze in such a way that they're, they're kind of ugly. Um, but, but we can also simply take uh, thoughts and, or information simply and project it into water and then see that there are, uh, it changes the, the valence banding patterns when, when you, um, anyway, you can, you can see the difference in the water uh, when you test it before and after, after putting certain thoughts into water. So knowing that your thoughts can change the, the sort of stored information or structure even of water, uh, why not make your water holy water? And this, all that it takes is you don't have to go to a special spring or, or anything like that. Um, you just simply think a thought, like a, like a little prayer or an affirmation, every time you pour yourself a glass of water. And um, so, you know, when I do that, I've got, uh, I've got a little note. If you want to put a note to remind yourself, it can be something like, thank you for sustaining my life. Um, this is why... Praying over food, you know, it used to be much more common, I think, than it is now. But it's something that I've re-put into my personal routine is before every bite of a uh, uh, first bite of a meal, take a moment of silence and actually 
you know, bless, bless your food and, and thank it for the role in sustaining your life. And we know, right, because food is mostly water, our bodies are mostly water, water, of course, is all water, that all of these things can be changed by our thoughts. So why not use these scientific discoveries to our advantage in order to make us more healthy? You could also, uh, if you wanted to, right, boost your immune system, you could be thinking, uh, you know, thank you for, for keeping me healthy and keeping my immune system strong or something like that, knowing we're in these uh, cerveza sickness times. All right, topic number three today. We're sending our four-year-old, soon to be four-year-old, he's three, three and change, uh, back to school or to preschool this fall and starting next week. And what's really interesting is, so there's a plan in place, you check in in the morning, with an app on your phone. And um, basically, it, you know, if you, it's like a little screening process and if you pass, then you can go to school and they do a temperature check at school. Um, and the other thing is that they're not letting parents into the buildings. They're not letting their walk their kids to the classroom. So there's a few differences, but m they have this plan in place, but nobody really seems to be worried. Mostly, it sounds like people are just excited to get kids back to school and back to learning and teachers are excited to be teaching and, and all these things. So so there's like this inconvenience. It's like the inconvenience that happened after 9-11 with TSA and the long lines at the airport and all that stuff. But back, to, you know, getting back to travel, getting back to school, it's just now it's a little bit more cumbersome, but nobody really seems worried about it, which I'm really happy about. And, uh, I, and I'm excited for, for interaction to start again. So we'll see how it all, all pans out. Um, you know, they are gonna have the kids wear masks all day uh good luck i think getting a bunch of three-year-olds wear masks all the time we'll see how that goes so uh i'd be curious if you have kids or sending them back to school um you know what what your plans are um or what your thoughts are on that and all right let's move to number four today is um <clears throat> uh, i think this is going to be really important in that uh well what we've seen first of all especially the, the pandemic is highlighting this, but uh, we're getting conflicting evidence or, or one source may say one thing or one source may say another. And what's going to be a superpower going forwards is how you, you are willing to shift your views based on new information. And this is, this is the hallmark of the scientific method uh, in that the evidence, you let the evidence tell you. And so partly uh, you know, how do you, how do you believe the evidence? That's, that's one thing is, is, uh, you know, there's interpretations of evidence that's eventually we're moving closer and closer to, to what is true or what are the facts in this case. But a, a good scientist, and I think a good citizen, uh, will be able to, in light of new evidence, uh, new things coming to light, will be able to shift their stance or, or their view. And when you get entrenched in a belief or a dogma, uh, largely that's, you know, that's a brain-based pattern of thinking that's, that's been taught to you. You've become habituated to a certain way of thinking. And because things are changing so fast, those people that are able to uh, leave behind old patterns of thinking that don't fit uh, the, the current facts or, or the current reality, those people are going to have an easier time versus people that are stuck continuing to have the same dogma or beliefs or thought patterns based on sort of outdated or, uh, you know, previous modes of thought. And that's, that's a hallmark of, of just, um, you know, new evidence, the scientific principle, when, once you get new evidence and the evidence starts to pile up, will you actually shift your belief or will you hold on to what you've always believed, even in light of new information. All right, so number five for today is, uh, ooh, this is very exciting. Uh, we're gonna be doing a podcast rebrand from The Art of Adventure at, over to the Derek Laudermilk Show. And basically, The Art of Adventure is, is limiting in some sense. And, it's, and creatively, sometimes you wanna have constraints, right? You don't want to just make it a show about everything. And so there was the focus that we had on uh, travel and, uh, you know, sports and performance and, and of course, digital nomads and business and things like that. But I want to expand this show a little bit more, uh, 
just starting to watch the Joe Rogan experience. Fascinating show. These long form, uh, you know, the Tim Ferriss show, the Rich Roll podcast, these really great long form podcast interviews that, that I really appreciate as, as a form of journalism. And I want to move in more in that route so I can get more, uh, more scientists, more uh, thought leaders of different types outside of just the adventure realm, more metaphysical people, more healers, more, uh, you know, just unconventional cutting edge people from different fields. And, and really, I want to take this, you know, there's a lot of podcasts that cover the basics, you know, your 10 minute business podcast, your little, little blurbs. And this show, really, I want to take people to a high level understanding of a particular topic. So whether that's going to be quantum physics or AI or um, manifestation or anything like that, we're going to be going deeper into these topics because because at this point I'm ready and I think the audience, you guys, are ready for the next level of understanding of some of these complex topics. So I'm really excited about that, which means we're going to do a website relaunch. We're going to have new you know, a new logo, new cover art imagery and all that stuff. So uh, heads up, that's in the process. Keep your eyes open for for that launch, which, uh, which will probably be coming out in September next month. Um, you'll start seeing the new podcast. So thanks for joining uh, Five for Fridays. Uh, please leave a comment with any of your main takeaways. And if you agree or disagree, or if it opened open your thinking to a new way of looking at things. Uh, so that's, that's what I, I like to do is just, you know, share what I'm learning about, share how I'm thinking about things. And, um, you know, sometimes we have to hear things a few different ways in order to, to really understand it. So just want to give you some, some more perspectives on these things and, uh, we will see you next week. Thanks for tuning in.